Lisa Murkowski, who was threatened and insulted, and, and Susan Collins, you know, both did the right thing on the motion to proceed and all of these votes and stayed on the right side of uh, the entire time through right. all the pressure. Maisie Hirono flew, flew in with cancer. She didn't get some heroes welcome. Yeah, or, let's be oh, clear. Look, look at what she did. Here, you know what? In oh, fact, um, we have here's a section from uh, Maisie Hirono. She gave a speech on the floor of the Senate. She is um, uh, she she has stage four kidney cancer, and she flew in for this vote. Um, sta- and I believe stage four kidney cancer is um, it's pretty bad. It's fatal. And it's not, yeah, I'm not sure. I, I don't know. I'm pretty, I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. quite sure. And so here she is. Here's a, here's a portion of her speech. Um, and so, you know, people need to see this vote in context. And there's one other element, but let's hear uh, May, uh, Maisie uh, Hirono. I am fighting kidney cancer. And I'm just so grateful that I had health insurance so that I could concentrate on the care that I needed rather than how the heck I was going to afford the care that was going to probably save my life. And guess what? When I was diagnosed with kidney cancer and facing my first surgery, I heard from so many of my colleagues, including so many of my colleagues on the other side of the aisle, who wrote me wonderful notes sharing with me their own experience with major illness in their families or with their loved ones. You showed me your care. You showed me your compassion. Where is that tonight? So I can't believe that a single senator in this body has not faced an illness or whose family member or loved one has not faced illness where they were so grateful that they had health care. I cannot believe that there is a single senator who has not experienced that in their family or their lives. So I know how important health care is. What I don't get is why every single senator does not know that, know that. Why are we here tonight voting on a bill that has not had a single hearing? Why are we here tonight voting on a bill that would eliminate health care coverage that could save lives for 16 million people. Why are we here voting on a bill that would probably mean that people like me, millions in this country, who are now in the ranks of those with pre-existing care, with pre-existing conditions, will not get the health care we need? Why are we here tonight? Where is your compassion? Where is the care that you showed me when I was diagnosed with my illness? I mean, it's 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 a moving speech. Yeah. People should uh, should look for that, and you know, obviously got overlooked. And, and, but uh, but she brings up a great point. You know, I mean, beyond the emotional impact of that, and that's what's so infuriating about so many conservatives is they have to experience something. We've talked about this themselves to understand, and if it's not going on to them right at the time, they don't get it. You know what I mean? I mean, I give example after example of of, uh, senators on the right who are terrible on most issues, but good on one issue or two issues because it's affected their family. Right. And that's what's so infuriating is they get it with her because they know her. But it's okay to let countless however many people die who you don't know. That's free. I don't know what it's how it's possible to change people who are willing to do that. I'm not sure what it is that moves people that are willing to just push a button, essentially, sit there and do it, push a button for their vote, and, and people die. Um, and, and, you know, th- and that's the thing. So, I, I mean, so she gave a big speech, you know, and yes, she was noticed for that speech because it was a wonderful and important speech, but she didn't fly into fanfare and, oh, the hero's coming back. She, she has, is, as you said, stage four cancer. She came and did her job. And, and then the last thing I'll say, because I give them a rough time, and I think they deserve it sometimes, but every conservative Democrat did not waver. All of them were up for re-election, you know, from Manchin to Heitkamp yeah. to, McC- to McCaskill, um, you know, and others that are going to be up in conservative states. Not one of them, you know, are red states or, or purple states. Not one of them at any point, at least that I heard, did, did, were they thinking about 
bailing on this. You know, so this you've got is... all of them. But let me just finish this one point, Sam. I just want to say this one thing. So you've got all of them. You've got Murkowski and Collins. You've got Maisie Hirono and, and all that. But McCain, for doing the wrong thing for most of the time, gets to swoop in the end, and he's a big hero. Well, that and is... That, that's John McCain's career. That's his career, right? I mean, that's what people like he... Joe Lieberman would do this. Uh, guys like Conrad mm-hmm. back in the day, and uh, mm-hmm. you, they they always made themselves the fulcrum, right? And yep. you know this is um, you know when they were talking about filibuster reform back in the day before they actually pulled the trigger, uh, th- some people were saying, well, make it fifty five instead of sixty. But the point that people didn't understand. When you make it an arbitrary number aside from, you know, sort of that just pure uh, majority is that these guys will always take a position that will make sure they're the 55th vote or the or the 51st. vote. I mean, that is what they do. They want to position themselves. And 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 I want to get to this point about what you said about about these conservative Democrats, because this is the one place, you know, this is where, frankly, you know, and, and, and people have and I've made this point that there is nothing that happened on the Republican side that is a function of Trump. The, 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 this That's disaster right. and this inability to pass a bill on the Republican side is, has nothing to do with Trump. It would be the same if it was Marco Rubio, it would be the same if it was Jeb Bush, it would be the same if it was Scott Walker. It, would, it doesn't matter. They, they are the same. But the difference is... Is and I and and I obviously have nothing. This is just a, an, a, an opinion here, but um, I think that the Russia stuff. When people ask, like, you know, what's the value of it? I think that stuff in tainting Trump on those terms, you know, on the national security terms, is why a guy like Manchin and why uh, a, a, a gal like Heitkamp did not jump over there. That that that's the only that that is is the his approval rating and the bill's approval rating makes them and part of the and and not just his approval rating because the bill's approval rating because in West Virginia because of Russia his approval rating in Russia is still above fifty percent and and I imagine in in in, uh, height camps is probably uh, in uh, Dakota North Dakota it's got to be I don't know above fifty percent I don't know what it's at exactly and but but. They can cling to this notion. They can cling to this notion of of it being. Uh, they can cling to this notion of it being well, about it national security. Not they, legitimate. Yeah. And and that I think is what where we, you know that is the story that you can't really you, you're not going to see you can, you don't see it covered that much and it can't really be written because how do you you know how do you prove a negative in that way. Um, Right. No, you're right. I think all these things contribute, but the biggest contributor of all in sort of damaging, the, the, you know, his the, Trump's image. I mean, granted, a lot of it is he's brought, you know, his stuff he does, his tweeting, his whatever. But all that combines to make it to, you know, and, and, and especially for those running in more conservative states, for Democrats who, you know, they're not going to appeal to the Republican base, obviously, but need to win some sort of Republican leaning voters. Um, that is where absolutely the, the Russia stuff has damaged and danged them enough that they can make an argument that this isn't somebody they felt comfortable trusting. They can find reasons around absolutely. to justify absolutely. why they did what they did. And it's much, I mean, um, and, I mean and so, uh, people have to uh, contemplate this. Yeah. Joe Manchin, I think if there's none of this Russia stuff, Joe Manchin is, the, is, is a Republican today. You know, I mean, like, I, I think, think like, I, I mean, I think they I think just come to about it. Yeah. I, I mean, I think Mitch McConnell goes across and says, we need another vote. And you come over here, man, you'll be a, a Republican. You will win in West Virginia, uh, hands down. You'll have no problem. And guess what? You want to be on the energy committee? You're going to be, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we're going to give you some uh, senior membership of the, uh, the, the energy committee. And boom. And my and name's that's Mitch McConnell, and I raise dirty money in my sleep. So if somebody primaries you from the right, like happened to McCain and happened yep. to Cochran and happened to whatever, we will destroy them. Hi, folks. Sam Cedar here. We still need your help on our Patreon page. YouTube ads have come back, but not nearly as much as we had before. So if you can help us out, any little bit helps. Head over to our Patreon page right at this URL, and you'll help us keep helping you by making videos.